Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer. And I really enjoy practicing, working on, um, perfecting the primitive skills. I think that they're, well, one, I just really, I just enjoy it. It's just fun to me. Two, um, I think it's something that we can always fall back on. If we're in a wilderness setting and you possess those primitive skills, your level of comfort in that wild place, I feel like is just going to be, is going to be elevated. Um, because if the GPS fails, if the black bear carries off your backpack, if, uh, weather gets terrible and tears apart your tent, you can still fall back. Like I said, on those skills that you've worked on perfecting and, and be fine. No big deal. And it just allows you to relax a little bit more when you're in wild places, I think. A lot less fear to go around. Now with that said, you should always have the most modern, most convenient, most reliable way to start a fire. I'll almost always carry some sort of shelter with me. Like in this situation, I'm in a pretty remote area right now. Not crazy remote, I mean, I'm not within reach of well, I'm definitely outside of reach of EMS. You know, emergency services isn't going to find me here. They're not going to be able to drive back here and pick me up. It would require a search and rescue party kind of deal. Um, but I've always got some sort of shelter. I've got a poncho with me right now. Um, I've always got a metal container of some sort, and I've got a water purification device as well, a, gr a grail water, water filter. Um, and I can check, and I've got some snacks too. So I've got food, fire, water, uh, and shelter. I can check those, those key boxes with the kit that I have in my, in my pack. But if all that was gone, if all that broke, all that got lost, whatever, I could still fall back on those primitive skills. And I think that's why it's so important to practice them. Um, but it is, but you need to be real about it. I've seen, I've heard people say, oh, I don't need to carry anything, but you know, a knife and I've got, and I can make all the stuff. I can make a burn bowl and I can, I can stone boil and make myself a, a, a brew, you know, make yourself tea. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. But holy crap, is that a investment in time? And I'm gonna show you exactly what it's, what it's like. I'm not gonna make a burn bowl because that takes forever. I'm gonna make a, a primitive bowl out of white pine bark because this time of year, summertime, the bark slips off the white pine, the younger white pines slips off there really, really easily. And um, and it works better than anything else I've found. You could do it on poplar trees around here too, but it just doesn't work as good, um, in my opinion. A little bit harder to work with. In order to make a bowl, I basically have to pinch the corners of this thing together. Basically on a white pine, there's a circle of branches and then there's a space of bark that's free of branches and then another whorl of branches. Um, and this is between, this length is the length between those two whorls. It's very pliable. It almost feels like a hide. It smells really nice and you can eat all of this white inner bark. All of this is edible, full of vitamins, really really good stuff and when you make when i do make a brew in this thing all of those nutrients is going to make it like a tea without having to put anything in the water at all so that's kind of cool there we go What we have now 
is a makeshift container. And that's about as fast of a one I can do permanently. Um, and this could be done with, an, with a rock. All right, you could, you could make this same bark bowl out of a rock with a, using a rock as your tool, as your cutting tool. It just takes longer, right? And you have to have, find the right, the right rock, the sharp rock. You have to nap it a little bit and make it a sharp edge in order to make it work. And it'll never be as clean or anything as, you, as if you had a knife. Um, with my knife, I can make these really nice, clean edges, and it just looks better. You know what I mean? And that matters. <laughs> now, you could drink out of this. I've drank gallons of water out of this spring right here without boiling it or purifying it, but you know, I'm just fortunate to live in a spot where you could do that. Um, that may not be your case. You might have some nasty, scummy water that has to be purified in some, some form or fashion in order to make it um, safe to drink. And you might have to resort to such primitive measures if you were unprepared or just out of luck. Let that settle down for a little bit. One of the things you have to accept about any of the, the primitive techniques is that it's slow. It's just, it's just going to take longer. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience. And if you try to rush any of them, you try to rush any of them, most likely you're going to fail and it's not going to work. So you just got to kind of, just got to kind of slow down a little bit. Take it all in. You know what I mean? Now these quartz rocks are about the best that I could do around here. There's not a lot of options. There's not a whole lot of rocks going on unless you go down, unless you start digging a lot. But then again, you're defeating the purpose if you're just burning through hydration, just sweating it out. You can find all kinds of rocks down there in the um, spring, in the creek down there, creek bottom. But, uh, but those are going to be soaking wet rocks and they're most likely going to blow up when you get them hot. And even these have quite a bit of moisture in them just because you're on the wet ground. This is basically a rainforest here, just about it. Um, and it is wet. Everything is soaking wet. So the stone boiling thing is a little bit risky. You got to be careful. Um, it's best to gradually heat them up. So while this fire is still barely burning and just a little bit of heat going on here, I'll probably just set them on top like that and let and let it slowly heat up as the fire builds up and fish them out of the uh, the coals after they've been really, they've been in there for a long time. I'm gonna whip up some quickie impromptu tongs here to help deal with those hot rocks because they can be a little bit uh, problematic to fish out of the fire and out of the bowl. This is a maple branch. They, they usually split pretty good. Some trees don't split very good. They're all twisty and wild, but even though this one has some knots and stuff in it, it seems to be splitting pretty decent. Like that. Snap it off. Don't need but a little piece of it. 
jam it in there nice and tight. Then we can pull the knife out and give ourselves a little wrapping to keep it from splitting the rest of the way. This is a piece of quartz, very dirty, obviously, from being in the fire, but probably very hot. Watch your eyeballs. Try to spill all my water out. And now I don't have to boil this water, you know, per se. I only have to get it up to a certain temperature for a certain period of time, but I have no way of knowing how warm the water is without a thermometer. So visually I can see that the water would boil. And after that happens, I know that the water is gonna be safe to drink after it cools off, obviously. But friends, that's boiling water right there. I'm confident the water has gotten up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, which will kill everything in it. As long as I give it enough time to cool down Every, it's going to be perfectly safe to drink if this was contaminated water. It's filthy, it's nasty looking water. It's got ashes and stuff in it. But um, when you stone boil water, that's what you get. And one of the things that really appeals to me about all this bushcrafty stuff is that after you're finished with it, it just goes back to the earth, you know? There's no... No trash to be left behind. I'm gonna pull off my paracord here. Stick that back in my pocket where it belongs. And I'm just going to discard this and it'll just get recycled. <sighs> like pine needle tea. It's still pretty hot. Piece of cake. So I think you get what I'm what I'm getting at. It's tedious. It's time consuming. It took me a few hours just to get this much water. This is probably this might be half a gallon of water. It's quite a bit, but um, but it still was a lot of effort to get it. So make sure you're carrying the equipment necessary to get yourself a fire easily guaranteed fire and a way to purify water no problem no matter what the scuzzy water that you might come across we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already tally ho